Welcome, welcome to a very special 1 p.m. Sharpway New Year special on New Year's Eve. I know a little bit odd timing, but I thought it would be interesting to do it during the day um, because some of you will be going out and doing special things and leaving and the types of things for New Year's Eve. And I hope many of you will have a great New Year's Eve. So I want to do a little bit of a special a bit earlier. I won't be doing a show tomorrow or day after, not until next Monday. So I figured now would be a good time. Why in the world would I want to do a New Year special? Why would that matter? What, what the hell do you care? There's a reason why. Most people know that in reality, January 1st is just a new year. It's just another day. That's all it is. It's another day like any other day. It's a new year because we deem it so. There's no magic for the actual new year. For those of you who don't know, the new year used to begin in March. That's correct. Many, many thousands of years ago, a year began in March during the spring, which makes sense, right? Which is why if you look at some of the years, like uh, October 8 would be the eighth month. If March was the first month, then October would be the eighth month. December 10, the 10th month, not 12th month. That's how it was originally done. So originally the year began in March during the spring, which makes sense. And then the Romans decided that wasn't true. So we're making it January, because that's when the senators report to become senators in Rome. I'm not joking. You can do your homework if you want. That's how the year began in January versus beginning in March, as it should have begun. Began. So it doesn't really matter, right? The, and the the uh, the um, uh, the the months of uh, July and August actually had numbers, but July from Julius Caesar, August from Augustus Caesar, the second emperor and so on. So th the days are all arbitrary. We can begin a new year whenever we want in reality. But the thing that most people may or may not realize is since it's symbolic, we are humans. We like symbols. So why don't we use this new year, this new new year and this new day to think differently about ourselves? To think differently about our community. Now, when I talked about the Christmas special, and some of you want to, might have watched that about a week ago, I talked a lot about the idea of us thinking about family and friends and others. And it was a critical time to do things like forgive and to reach out to people and to care about others. And it's a good time to do so. And I think we should. And we also have to look inward. We have to also look in a mirror and look at ourselves, not just others, but ourselves. And this is a great time. If we were looking at family last week during the Christmas time, let's look at ourselves this time. It's a good time to look at ourselves and ask ourselves some very important questions. And the number one question is, am I happy? I know that sounds odd, but you guys know I push happiness all the time. Am I happy? If you can look at yourself and go, I'm happy. Good. That's a great thing. Enjoy that. Accept that you're happy. Enjoy for the time you have because it will be fleeting. Something negative will happen in your life as it always does. Life always has its ups and downs. Enjoy that you're happy and try to understand why you're happy. And I'm serious. If you just feel good, think about why you do. Take some time today or tomorrow to think about why you're feeling good. Right? The old counter blessings, right? That concept is a smart concept. But I want us to actually think, I want you to actually think, why am I happy right now? If you're saying, you know what? No, I'm, I'm not really happy right now. Okay. Why? Also, I don't want you to only feel sorry for yourself. Don't get me wrong. We all like pity parties. We all like feeling sorry for ourselves sometimes. I do it. We all do it. It's fine. It happens. The question is, is this pity party, is it five minutes? Is it five weeks? Is it five months? Is it five years? Let's go close to the five minutes. How about that? Let's let's go close to that. I want it as close to that as possible, even though we're going to have that pity party or feel bad for ourselves. I get it. But then what is our next step? How do we make this thing better? Michael Larry, that is really a broad question. It is. Let me break it down a little bit if I could. Ask yourself if you feel like you are respected. I'm very serious. Do you feel like people around you 
people who you care about, people who matter to you, do you feel like they respect you? And if you go, yeah, I do feel that. Good, that's a great thing. You're probably looking towards some happiness. But you say to yourself, no, I don't think they do. I think they just deal with me or, you know, placate me or pacify me or maybe anything like that. You feel that you don't get the respect you deserve, maybe. You get some respect, but not the respect that you deserve. If you think that's true, now it's time to ask yourself, why do they think that? And a more important question, are they right? Oh, that hurts if you say to yourself, they're right. Meaning you haven't shown them enough value for them to respect you. That may be true. But you can look in that mirror and say to yourself, if they don't respect me, is it them or is it me or is it both? And more importantly, is it real or is it perceived? Are you actually not being worthy of respect or are you not projecting it to where they can understand it? These are important things for you to start thinking about, looking in the mirror and saying to yourself, okay, why, why is it not working? Is it me? Is it them? Is it both? Is it perception? Is it reality? You might go, yeah, well, I am respectable, but they just don't get it. Okay, but that's still a problem, isn't it? That's still a problem. So looking at yourself at this point and saying, what can I do to make that happen? And if you don't know, say you have no idea. People don't give me the respect that I want them to give me, and I don't know why. I don't get it. Okay. Ask people who you trust and share with them and be vulnerable with the people that you trust and tell them and say, you know what? They don't respect me at my job or with my friends or whatever the case may be. They don't respect me in this way that I would like them to. And be open with them and see what they say. Here's the hard part. Don't listen to the first thing you hear. Don't. Two or three or four people then start feeling, hmm, okay, if three or four people that I respect or I care about are telling me the same thing, it's probably true. Now, the question then becomes, is this real or perception? Are you really doing things? Are you really acting in a way that people shouldn't respect you? Or... Is it what they're perceiving because of what you're projecting, what others are projecting? And the last part, if all those things are not true, is it that this is a lost cause and you shouldn't be around those people? They're never going to respect you, no matter what you do. It doesn't matter if it's perception. Maybe you should cut them from your life completely. Man, is that hard? Because sometimes those people are family. Boy, does that suck. Or can you handle it? The odds are if it's bothering you, you can't handle it because it's bothering you. You probably can't. So now here are your options. Change your behavior. Change how people see you. Or end the relationships in some way. Wow, was that hard? Yeah. But when are you going to do it? You're going to sit there in your bad relationships for the next 5, 10, 20 years? Or how many of you have already been in those relationships the last 5, 10, 20 years? Are you going to end them or change them? You should do one of those two things. Now is the time to start thinking of this. Right? Now is the time to start thinking about exactly this. It's New Year. What a great reason to start this now. But Larry, how can I do this thing? I've decided that these people in my life, or this person in my life does not give me the respect that I think I deserve. And it's bothering me because I want that person to give me that respect that I think I deserve. And I talk to my friends and they say, you're worthy of respect. He doesn't get it. You're not showing him that. Okay, great. So I had to change my behavior to show this person that they should respect me. Maybe it's my boss, my friend, my mom, my dad, whoever it is, the person that you want to respect you. What are you going to do? Are you going to act differently? Ask your friends what they think. Come with a plan. Oh, I shouldn't say his friends. People close to you, maybe family, maybe friends, maybe coworkers, depends upon who you are and what you're doing. And once you ask, once you come up with that idea, whatever that thing is, <laughs> tell two people. Tell someone you love and tell someone that you respect. I'm going to do this thing. More importantly, come up with a deadline. Deadlines are so critical. 
They're arbitrary too. They are. Just like New Year's is arbitrary. Yes. But in our head, it's not. Because when you tell somebody, I'm going to do this thing by this time, you want to impress that person if you love them or respect them. You want to. You don't want to do the old, well, I did it. Now tell people, you know, when it's done, it never gets done because you hit it and you'll disappoint yourself all day long, but you don't want to disappoint the other people that you either love and or respect. So tell them to make the change and begin to make that change. And that's respect. Second part. Do you feel loved? Do you feel loved by the people who you want to love you? Who those people are. And that can be romantic, can be family, can be friends. Doesn't matter, any of those three. But do you feel that you are loved? If you go, yeah, I feel like I'm loved. Life is good, good on you. Why? Who? Great. Connect again, make sure that stays. If you say, no, there are people that I just don't feel like love me and I wish they would. I wish they'd show it more. I wish they, I, I don't feel like I'm being loved. Same thing, it doesn't change. The idea is the same. You can take responsibility for this too, just like all the rest. What can you do? Is it you? Is it them? Should Is it perception? Is it real? And should you cut them from your life? All hard things. Because again, these might be friends. These might be, this might be a job. This might be a job you have to end or change. Any of those things. This might be a job. Could be your family. Could be your mom or your dad. Who knows? Do you have to change the perception, change what you're doing, or end the relationship? Any of those three can be the right answer. But you just take action. Because here's the problem. If you don't take some form of action, things will only get worse. They never get better. You can only coast downhill. It never gets better. No matter what, it never gets better. It gets worse if you don't take some form of action. Larry, what if I take this action and it fails? It might. What if I take this form of action and it gets worse? I already have a bad relationship with my cousin and now I do what you say and it's going to get worse. It might. It might get worse. It's true. But you will still feel better because you're taking action. They will see that you're taking action. Your cousin will see you're taking action. You're trying to do something. And your cousin will react positively or negatively. Whatever your cousin will choose to do. And you have to work on it from there. I would ask you several things if you try this. One, make a deadline. Two, tell somebody you love and somebody you respect. And three, stay consistent even when you have resistance. Because here's the most important thing. If you actually take some time in your life right now, tomorrow, today, to rethink what you should or could do, to make some changes in your life, to do something differently in your life now, the people around you, most of them won't like it. How do I know, Larry? You, I didn't even tell you what I'm gonna do. Doesn't matter, they won't like it. They will feel awkward, they will feel different. Why are you changing? Why are you acting this way? Why are you doing something different that I don't expect of you or I didn't expect of you? And they won't like it. And when they don't like it, the average person will stop and go back to your old ways and fall back into status quo. And I'm asking you that when that happens and they go, why are you doing this now? Why are you acting this? Blah, 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 blah. Don't fall back into your status quo. Expect them to be upset or weird. It could be something, you've seen it, right? You've done something, you've decided to change how you eat or change one of your habits or stop smoking or quit going out on every Friday and Saturday, just going out on Saturdays, whatever. You've, you've done something different that you thought would be better for you in whatever way that is. You started to go back to school or you're working hard or you're learning a new language or whatever is the thing you thought, it's gonna help me. I'm gonna like this, make myself feel better about myself. I'm gonna get some more respect from other people. I'm gonna get some more love. It's gonna be good. Whatever you thought was right. And people said, why are you doing that? I don't like, that's a waste of time. That's stupid, don't do that. You get it? You've seen it. You've heard. You've been that person saying it to others. You've done it. You've seen it. And I'm asking you, if you start doing that and people give you that pushback, stay the course. And you might say, well, Larry, that's why I'm not going to tell them. I don't want to tell them because they're going to get upset or they're going to make fun of me or whatever the case may be. You might be right. But how are they going to respect you? 
And how are you going to love yourself if you can't stand up in front of them? Let me say it again. How are they going to respect you? And how are you going to love yourself if you can't stand for yourself? If you can't do that, maybe they shouldn't respect you. Oh, I know that sucks. Think about that, though. Am I wrong? If you think I'm wrong, tell me. I'm happy to be wrong. You know I am. But tell me. The last thing I want to bring up here is that you hear me talk about all the time is purpose. Why? Why are you doing what you're doing? Do you know? And if you know, good on you. You are very blessed. You have a purpose. That's amazing. You have a calling. I hope you do. I hope you have a purpose. I hope you have a calling. It's awesome. But let's say you don't. Say you're not sure. Say you're still just kind of sitting around and, and, and not figuring things out and not and just going about the motion uh, about the motions, just kind of letting inertia run your life. You might go, this is bad, Larry. It's, I'm in trouble. Maybe, but the reality of it is most people do that. Most people let inertia run their life. They just keep walking down the road and whatever happens, happens. They take whatever's there and they're just kind of moving. Because in fact, most organizations are run that way. You might think, well, my boss, my boss is running my company or I'm the boss and I'm running the company. That may not be true. The company might just be moving and you're just reacting to what's happening. That could be what's happening. And in most organizations, that is what's happening. The question is, do you have a purpose? And if you don't, it doesn't mean the world's ending. You can very easily grab somebody else's purpose. It's very easy and very good. You can make another person your purpose. And it, that can be as literal as being a caregiver, right? That's literally making someone else your purpose. You're, you're, you're a caregiver to someone, that's literally. Or, it doesn't have to be literally, but that's one option. Other one is just getting on board with their purpose. They're going to go change voting rights and you're going to get behind them and do that thing with them. Awesome, right? Or they're part of something they want to make happen. They they want to uh they want to build the coolest Minecraft world ever and put it on YouTube. I, I don't know if that's important, whatever. They're going to do that. So, you're going to get on board and help them build the coolest Minecraft world for YouTube. It doesn't really matter what the thing is, but do you have a reason to get up in the morning and start doing the thing. And one of the most important pieces about purpose is it draw it makes you both want to sleep because you sleep easier and not want to sleep because you want to do the thing. Hopefully you can find that thing in your life and begin to move towards that purpose. Because when you have that purpose, you will find it's easier for people to respect you. You will find it's easier for you to respect yourself and easy to love yourself. You'll find it easy for you to move forward. Now, the problem is if you have purpose without the love and without the respect, you can just become someone who is obsessed. And that's not healthy for you, obviously, right? You don't want to be the hermit who sits in your in your basement all day trying to solve, I don't know, what's what really is gravity or whatever. Is that a thing? Whatever, right? You don't want to become that person and then you sit there and then you go nuts. That's not the right answer, right? You want to be able to do it where you can share with those who care and be together. It's an important piece to do that. And the time to do that, now. Now's the time. Not last week, not next week. Now. Now is the time to do this. Use this, because it's the best part. Culturally, socially, it's what we do. If you were sitting there on July 30th and said, I'm gonna do this thing, people think, what that, where's, where's that coming from? What's wrong with him? What's wrong with her? Why is she doing that? But now it's New Year. You can say the cool thing you want to do. And people go, oh, it's New Year. You're supposed to do resolutions and stuff. So, yeah, this becomes socially acceptable and you get people on board. So take advantage of our culture. Take advantage of the time now to make that step. If you're unsure what a good purpose could be, I would ask you, look at all the things you've been doing in the past years. Have you been... Whether you've been working, whether you've been volunteering, taking care of a family, a combination of all three, whatever you've been doing, what were the things you were doing that you actually missed when you weren't doing them? When you weren't doing them, you missed it. And when you were doing them, you very rarely procrastinated. When you were doing the thing, whatever that thing was, 
you very rarely procrastinated. You usually got got to work or got to doing the thing. When that it, it, that's an important thing. Then reverse. When you're doing stuff now, how often are you procrastinating? On your phone, on YouTube, whatever, watching me. That's not procrastinating. But whatever, right? When are you doing those things versus doing the other thing? This will help you to figure out what your purpose should be, where you should be going, what you should be pointing to. Because you want to have a situation to where time zips by so fast because you're enjoying what you're doing. You're getting in the zone often, right? You're getting in the zone often. You can't believe how long it's been or what's happened or who's here. And you always feel a sense of, I did something today. Versus, what'd you do today? Went to work. What'd you do today? Clean the house. There's an old saying, it's a, not an old saying, it's an old story. I have no idea if it's true or not, but a lot of consultants will use this story. So I'll say it. I don't know if it's true. I don't even know where it comes from. There's a, there's a uh, reporter going to a building site and he finds three bricklayers. And these are all three bricklayers. They're doing exactly the same job laying bricks. And he goes to the first person and says, what do you do? And he says, oh, I'm laying bricks. Goes to the second person, says, what are you doing? He goes, I'm building a wall. They're doing exactly the same job. Goes to the third person, what are you doing? He goes, I'm building a school. Who's happier? Who has purpose? Who's going to work? They're, in this fictitious case, they are doing the same job. They are laying bricks. One person says, I'm laying bricks. There's no purpose. There's no pride. There's no respect. There's no love in that. He's just doing the job to get a paycheck and go home. And don't get me wrong. I want you to paycheck. I want you to pay bills. Please pay bills. It matters. I'm not saying quit your job and run. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is if you're guy number one, that's not purpose. Guy number two, eh, he's got a plan. He's better. Guy number three is building a school. That guy's got purpose. That guy, he knows what he's doing. He wants to get up in the morning and do it. It matters to him. The question is for you too. And it doesn't matter whether you're doing a job, taking care of family, nonprofit, all three, building a new business, changing your career, whatever it is. Now's time. Now it's time to ask yourself, are you laying bricks? Are you building a wall? Or are you building a school? What are you doing with your life? Let me say it again. What are you doing with your life? Larry, you understand. Spot I'm in. I got to pay bills and that's all that matters. Paying bills is not all that matters. It does matter. Totally matters. It's not all that matters. If you just pay your bills, you are destined to be unhappy. You're destined to be unhappy. And if you're going to stay unhappy, the people around you will either leave you or they will also be unhappy. Why in the world would you want to incur, increase the odds of you and those around you being unhappy? Can I guarantee it? No, neither can you. Nobody can. Can we set the odds in place for you to be happier? Yeah, we can. And the first step to doing that is finding a time. I say it's today. I say it's today or maybe tomorrow. I don't, either one. Today or tomorrow. That's what I say it is. I hope you agree with me. Time for you to look in yourself and say, you know what? Now it's time. I want you to think about what you enjoy doing and when you procrastinate and think about how does that fit into your life and how can you do something to make that change? What physical thing can you do? One thing. What I do not want you to do is do this. You know what I should be? I should be a brain surgeon. So I'll just go get a PhD and go be a brain surgeon. That's what I'll do. Now, not that you should be a brain surgeon. Maybe you should. But what you want to do if you decide that that's really what you want to be, and I hope you all want to be brain surgeons, it'd be amazing, but whatever. The first thing you want to do is what is the first step? Is the first step picking a school? Is the first step, I don't know, finding money for that? Is the first step changing your calendar so you can find time to research a grant to get money? I don't, I don't know what the answer is for you. It depends on what you're doing. But there's your first piece. I want to do something different. What is the number one, the first thing you must do? 
And when you find that first thing, whatever that, I mean, the most basic thing, I need to go online and get this, find this, call my friend and get this information, go to the school and fill out this form, whatever. This is the one thing you have to do, schedule that with a specific time, a specific deadline, put it into your, whether it's your paper calendar or your, or your Outlook calendar, your Google, whatever you're using, write it down, your sheet of paper, your to-do list in your fridge, whatever is the thing you do to get stuff done, put it in that and tell two people, someone you love and someone you respect, it may not be the same person, two separate people. You want to make it public. You want to make it out there with people who you care about. So you don't only disappoint yourself, but you disappoint them. Ask them to follow up with you. And if they care about you, and if they respect you, and they care about you, they will. They will. They'll go to you and go, are you getting that done? Do you care about that? Are you moving forward? Do I actually care if you do that thing? No. I don't. Larry, but you just said, go do all these things and do this stuff. I did just say that. Yes. I want you moving. That's what I want. Because maybe the thing we're talking about, you shouldn't do. Maybe it's the wrong answer. Maybe it's a dumb thing. Maybe you just pulled it out of thin air. Maybe you watched a TV show and thought you were going to be somebody cool from TV. Maybe that's what happened. And that's okay. But I want you moving forward. It does matter. Larry, you're, you're running for office. You've got this sharp way show. Why the hell are you sitting here telling us about how we can be better? Why do you even care? There's many reasons why I care. One, it's just who I am, number one. But it's a second piece. A, there's a more selfish piece, believe it or not. The stronger we are individually, the stronger we are as a group. It's how it works. What's the old saying? The, the change is strong as the weakest link. Well, I want our weakest link to be very strong. And one of one of our links falls down, I want us to pick that link up. I want us to fix each other and help each other. I talk all the time about community. I talk about it, don't I? If I'm a talk the talk, I got to walk the walk. I talk all the time about how we have to build community. If we're going to get rid of government, we have to build community. Well, I'm doing my part to build community. We have to build community. We simply have to. We've got to be stronger to each other, better to each other, stronger with each other. We've got to be better as individuals. If we're not, our community is not going to be strong. And government's going to come in and do what government does. And that's what's happening now. So, yeah, I do spend my time during this time of year. I do. I spend time on Christmas talking about family. And then time on New Year's talking about you. Because we have to build ourselves up, too. It isn't just the, 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 the group. It is. But it's also you and I personally. It does matter. That's why I talk about this. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be like, Larry, that's nice, whatever. Yeah, it's matter. Okay, yeah. Yeah. And maybe I won't move many of you. But I don't know. Am I, is it the fourth time you hear this? The 25th time you hear this? Or the 100th time you hear this that will get you up and running and moving? I don't know. I hope I'm one of those. And maybe I'm the one that got you up to change your life. I hope I'm the one. But not I'm in a series of. And hopefully I'm I'm helping to build uh, the straw. And the one will finally go and break the camel's back. And you'll get up and running and moving. But what if you were already good? You're like, Larry, I, I, I got it. I'm good. Good. Here is my challenge for you then. Help somebody else. That's my challenge for you. Help somebody else. You don't have to. Not required. You should. And I hope you will. And if you're in a good spot right now and you don't really need this, you're like, yeah, Larry, nice. Sounds good, but I don't need this. Great. There's someone in your life who does. And you know that. And you know that there's someone in your life right now who could use some help who could use a nice guy or gal and go, hey, let me hold your hand for a couple minutes and get you up and up and running. Do that. If you're good, go do that. If you're not good, don't go do that. And let me be very clear on this. There is a big issue here in our country right now, and you all see it. A bunch of broken people who don't want to look inside and instead spend their life trying to fix other things and their mind's validating, I can't fix myself because I have to save the world. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do both. You can. You can try to save the world and also save yourself. You can do both. But that group of people, and you 
you know someone like that, or maybe it was you at one point in your life too, where you were ignoring yourself because you've got to be altruistic and save someone else or save the world. This is unhealthy for you and for them. It's unhealthy for everybody. You can do both. You can save yourself and try to save the world. Both are possible. It's more challenging though. And the biggest thing is when you put yourself out there to try to save the world, whatever you can try to do in your life, the purpose that you want that's important, save your family, whatever the case may be. The hardest part and the most counterintuitive part is now is when you must be vulnerable. Now is when you must be vulnerable. Wow. Larry, but I thought you want me to be strong. Yeah, you can be both. You can be both. An example I'll give, which I give all the time, is Gandhi. Gandhi walked around in a loincloth, vulnerable as, as, as anyone, right? And strong as anyone. You can do it. You can be both. In fact, sometimes I would argue the more vulnerable you are, sometimes the stronger you are. I try to practice that. You guys know I share a lot of stuff. I try to be as vulnerable as I can. I talk about my failures. I talk about things that happened in my life to try to show you that I'm not afraid of showing you. My one of the my one of my mentors is a guy named Dr. Mark Goulston. Brilliant, brilliant guy. Uh, wrote many books. One of the books he wrote was one called um, "Just Listen." Another one he wrote was "Talking to Crazy." Brilliant guy, and he brings up the idea of what he calls bearing your throat. And he says, the advantage of bearing your throat in the business model, which I talk about when I do my business training, so sometimes the lady who's going to bear your throat, show it, here it is. What happens? Well, the people who want to beat you up, they come out. They go, oh, his throat's open, get him. And they, and you, your enemies come out, you can see them. And if I'm going to have enemies, I'd rather see them than have them hidden. So if I'm going to have them, let them come out. I now see my enemies, right? When you bear your throat. Second, you find people who don't care. They'll go, oh, that's his throat. Whatever, go back to business. You find people who don't really care. Who like you, but whatever. Eh, that's fine too. Not everyone's going to love you. It's fine. But you also find people go, oh my God, his throat's bad. Dude, what are you doing? Put it down. Stop. What's going on here? When you bear your throat, when you are vulnerable, you very often show or you draw out the people who really love you and care about you, the people who are whatevs, eh? and the people who want to get you. You find them all. So bearing your throat very often is very good. It's, it's painful in the short run, but in the long run, it really is a good idea. And I would say that in personal life, I do it constantly. You see me burying myself constantly. And people get mad at me and call me names and do things like that. Yes, that's the issue. You really do want to start thinking about this. More vulnerability, more openness, specifically in today's world where everyone's trying to beat you up and come after you and, and call your names, make one mistake, and they're going to try to destroy you. You might as well get it all out now. It's less powerful. It's less powerful. You take your you take your power away from your enemies by doing that. So that works here. That works in life. That works in family. All those things. How many times do you, do you look at yourself and say something like, wow, that guy just doesn't care. And you respect him. It's hard to not do that. So I know I yapped a bit. Let me let me let me kind of put this in a bow, and then I'll go through some of your comments. So thank you for the chat for being so kind today. I know I, I didn't do politics today. People think I'm always doing politics, and I usually do. But there are times when I don't. Right? I talked during Christmas time about family, helping others, sharing that kind of stuff, looking out for people around you, that kind of thing. Today's New Year. Now I'm talking about you, taking care of yourself, looking at yourself, being happier, caring about what's going on in your life, and then using the others who I hope you're helping and now getting them to help you, right? This should be a two-way street. You should be helping others and others should be helping you. That's what community is about. If we do more of that, we won't need as much government, will we? It's when we don't do that that we we cry for someone to help help us and we start going to government and programs and policies and agencies and all those things versus our community, which is the most important one. Look at yourself and ask yourself, do I feel loved? Do I feel respected? If I feel loved, awesome. Life is good. Share it with someone else. If I don't 
feel loved? How in the world can I change that? Whether that's romantically, family, friendship, type of love is irrelevant as long as you do feel like people care about you and you feel good about yourself in front of them. Right? Critical piece. Remember what love is. Love is not how you feel about someone. Love is how you feel about yourself when you're with those people. That's what love is. How do you feel about yourself when you're with them? If you feel like you're a piece of garbage, there's no love there. If you feel like, oh, I'm a good person, then there's love there. So that's a critical piece. One, is it them? Is it you? Two, is it real or is it perception? Three, is it hopeless should you end the relationship? Those are your three questions to ask. Is it you? Is it them? It might be you. Is it perception or is it real? Maybe it's how, what the, how they're seeing you or maybe it's really you. Lastly, is it time to just get out of here? It's time to walk away. Are you respected? Same thing. Are you worthy of respect or are they not worthy of it? Is it real or is it perceived? Is it hopeless? Should they end the relationship? Whether that is a professional relationship or whether it is a, a personal one, even the hardest one, if it's family, that's the hardest. Maybe it is. Lastly, do I have a purpose? And can that purpose be someone else? or someone else's purpose? Can I get on board? Can I help someone or someone else's purpose? Can I do that to get myself up in action and rock, rock and rolling? And then whatever those things are, what's the first step? What's the first thing I gotta do? Is it pick up a phone? Is it get online? Is it get a document? Is it go someplace? What's the first thing that I need to do? Set a deadline for that first one thing, that first step, tell two people. I'm gonna go do this thing. I'm gonna set a deadline. I'm going to go do this stuff, tell two people to make that happen and get yourself moving. Break yourself out of the rut that you might be in. Stop being run by inertia and take charge and run towards something versus away from something. Run towards something this year. Why start it? Start it now because culture says it's okay. That's the reason. Our society says now is when we do it. So do it now. People go, yeah. Yeah. She's doing the cool thing now. We're all doing that. Now is the time to start doing that now. And if you say to yourself, Larry, I got this. I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Then help somebody else. I hope you're all good. I hope everyone watching, everyone listening is awesome. That'd be great. You know what? There is now an army of people who can go out and help others. Pay it forward. Help someone else to make that happen. Give someone else that purpose. It does matter. And the last piece I'll bring up. During this holiday season, sometimes on New Year's times, people become very distraught to the point where they want to end their lives. Happens. Suicide's the worst. The worst does happen. And when it begins to happen, realize that the person around you who feels that, or if it's you, believes in their heart four things. One, they're not loved. Two, they're not respected. Three, they have no purpose. And four, the most important one, Things will be better when they're gone. None of those things are true. If you feel that, you should start talking to yourself about this, to having others talk about this. If you think someone else feels it, talk to them about it. It does matter. You don't know when that person, again, I, you don't know wh when whether it's your talk or the next guy's talk or whoever's talk, Some someone is going to get to that person. Is it the first I love you or the 400th? I don't know which one, but one of them can work. One of them could. You should be one of them. I hope I'm one of them. You should be one of them too. Guys, thanks so much. Let me, let me take a couple of comments and questions if I could get a lot of stuff came out here. By the way, of course, always, if you think it's valuable, go ahead and like, comment, and share. I always say it. Please do it if you think it's valuable. Please like, comment, and share if you like. I know it isn't my normal stuff, but I don't always do this. I often share myself. I think it's more important. If you know who I am. So that's why I do this stuff. So let me just grab this. Ed says, great show. Thank you, Ed. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Joe says, my New Year's resolution for 2022 is to actually do research on the candidates on my balance of voting for only my preferred party candidates I do no research on. Oh, I like that. It's interesting. It's a change, right? I like that. Good change. Nice. I like that. Logic says, looking in the mirror and admitting to a negative is very difficult for most people. 
Correct logic, and it is the best way to personal growth. So it's also something else. It's the best way to personal respect, believe it or not. Looking at yourself and admitting a negative. Now, there's a difference here. I don't want you to beat yourself up, particularly if you have a history of that. If you're someone who looks in the mirror and goes, you're stupid, you're bad, you're dumb, you're ugly, or whatever you've been, whatever self-talk you've given yourself. If you're doing that, that's a bad idea because you're good at that and no one can beat you up better than yourself, right? We can beat ourselves up really good. So I don't want you to say, I'm a bad person. I want you, there's a big difference. I want you to say, there is something bad about me or wrong or not good enough about me. There's a difference. Is the damage that you see in that mirror, whatever that is, right? Whatever damage you see or whatever flaw that you see in that mirror, is it something that's what's called the three Ps? Is it pervasive? Does it cover everything? Is it permanent? Will it never go away? Is it personal? Is it only you? You're the only unlucky person in the world who has this. The odds of none of those things are true. Maybe one of them might be, but the odds of none of them are. If one or two of them is true, eh, bad at the end of the world. If all three are true, okay, it's a problem. But the odds are it isn't. And not just that, it isn't you. It's a thing about you that you can change or adjust or shift if you want to. The question is, can I change it? And the second question is, should I change it? Is it a negative because you believe it's a negative or because someone in your life believes it's a negative? This goes back to that respect and love thing. Is the person who thinks the negative thing about you, the flaw that you see in that mirror, does that person both love and respect you? If they do, it's probably important to be forward. It's probably important. So the, the, if the person going, hey, I don't like the thing about you, whatever that thing is, does the person love and respect you? If they do, it's probably valid. And maybe you should deal with the issue, whatever that issue is. If they don't love or respect you, why the hell do you care? It's a serious question. The flaw you see in the mirror are the people who are saying it. Do they love and respect you? If they don't, why do you care? If they do, have the conversation. Maybe you're going to make some changes. Maybe you should. Do you agree with them? You go, yeah, you know what? You're right. Great. You see that in the mirror? People who love and respect you agree it's a problem. You agree it's a problem. Let's have a time to do something. What's the answer? What is the deadline we're going to set? And what two people are going to tell? And get moving. And if you're wrong, no worries. You get moving. Some of you have seen this before. It's common usually in health more than anything else, but in many things. Learning, it's common too. You decide, you know what? I want to be healthier. I want to sleep better or whatever is the thing you think. Your sleep is bad. So you decide you want to sleep better. When you start working on sleeping better, you wind up doing other things that will help you. Maybe you exercise more or eat a little bit better or whatever. You'll do other things. You'll start taking vitamins or something, right? You'll do something else in your health because you began to make a change. It's going to be better with your family. So, you know, I'm, I'm going to call my mom every week because I have it. I don't call my mom. She's like, you going to call your mom every week. All these are calling your uncle or hanging out with your cousin. The, the whole thing begins. You've got to start the ball rolling. So thank you for that. Yes. All righty. Um, Joe says, I did a 10-item list of 2022 resolutions. Wow. I hope for the government on my campaign page. Uh, oh, for the government. Okay, yeah, that's good. Okay, th nicely done. I like that one. Yes. John says, hey, Larry, thanks for being a voice of reason in a year full of authoritarianism. Happy New Year to you and Liberty Movement. Yes, I, I appreciate that, John. I'm trying my best to, I'm trying my best to be human with all of you. Right. That's my that's my hope to be as human as I can and to put everything back into our pocket, because, if we're, again, if we're going to remove government, we have to add community. We are the community. Right. We are the community. So I'm right here. Um, Doug says people are pretty spineless these days, even simple confrontation. Yes. And it's a problem, Doug. It shows a weakness in our society. It shows a weakness in our parenting. It shows a weakness in our school system, a weakness in our professional environment. It is it is a weakness that is not good. And the worst part is the people who are trying to stop it think they're helping. And in reality, they're making things worse. But they think they're helping. You're completely correct. I I have a I have a habit 
even in my parenting, I will often jokingly tease my daughters and allow them to tease me. You may go, Larry, that sounds horrible. No, I joke with them and they joke back with me. And when they say things to me, I take it friendly and we joke and laugh. Oh, good one, but back and forth. I'm trying to make my daughter's skin thicker because I know the world is cruel. And we try our best to just, you know, well, you can't say this, you can't say that. Okay, so in certain arenas, you can't. But in other arenas, you will. And if you're unaccustomed to them in the normal course of, 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 of back and forth, when it comes at you, it's extra devastating. It's extra devastating. So it's going to crush people when it shouldn't. Back and forth should be a thing we can handle. Doesn't mean you don't get angry. Of course, I don't like if you say things I don't like. Of course, I'm human. But, but I shouldn't be devastated by it. And I remember one of the things, um, I think it was in the, I think it was in the uh, debates. It was in the debates. And it was the way some of the chemists were saying things like, and when that happened, I was deeply hurt. And I said to myself, you were deeply hurt from something that happened in politics and you're a leader and you're deeply hurt over something somebody said. Should you really be in charge? Now, if you, it bothered me or it annoyed me, made me angry, yeah, you're human. We get annoyed. We get angry at people, at what people do. But I should only be deeply hurt if something is trying to deeply hurt me, attacks me and lands well, right? That's when I should be deeply hurt, particularly if I'm gonna go into a public arena to be in charge of people. I shouldn't be deeply hurt. I get pissed off, annoyed, mad, sad, whatever, disappointed. These are all normal uh, emotions we all we all achieve. We all we all achieve. We all um, experience. So yeah, I think you're right. It's it's a problem it, with people not wanting to confront and also not wanting to be confronted. I agree. You're right, and it's a problem. You're you're correct, and it's a problem. Yes. Log says getting to a point in life where not caring about this thing is one of the most legitimate forms of freedom and liberty that exists. Yes, yes, and yes. There's literally a book I forgot. Is it the art of not the art of not giving an F? It's actually a, a book, and very often I deal with my my family and friends when things happen. I literally say these words to them. I say, "Okay, great. Why do you care?" That's what I use often. I go, "Well, it's bad." Okay, yeah, it's bad. Why do you care? Sometimes they have an answer. Great. Then let's take action. If you care and it matters, let's take action. Me saying "Why do you care?" doesn't mean you shouldn't care. It means you should be thinking, why do you care? What can you do? Otherwise, you know what winds up happening? And this is the thing that's happening for a lot of people. It's a burnout in caring. And it sounds dumb, but it's true. How many things can I care about? I got to still live, don't I? I got to still hang out with family and friends and pay my bills and do the things I want in my life. I can't care 24-7. Oh, my God. Eventually, I don't want to care at all. I become numb to everything. Or I become numb to everything that I check out. Or... Because there's so much, I only care about the one side, the one talking head and no one else. Whatever they say I'm caring about, that's what I'm caring about now. I think a lot of that's happening. Gene says, need to hear this today. Thank you. You are more than welcome. Thank you for listening. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for being part of the community. I appreciate it. Absolutely, I appreciate it. Nooner Eclipse, hope you uh, ho uh, hope you a happy new year, Larry, during trying and turbulent times and no more pessimism and complacency. Time optimism. The night is darkest before the dawn. Mark my words, dawn is coming. I hope you're right, my friend. I really hope you're right. Yes, absolutely. 100%. Doug says you're awfully lovey dovey today. Guilty as charged, Doug. Guilty as charged. I am. I I'm trying to be on purpose. Then he continues, hell yeah, local matters down, down with the centralization. Yeah, and um, remember, local goes all the way down, in the best case, to the individual. So stronger individuals, stronger groups. Absolutely. So, yes. Larry says, Happy New Year, Larry. May Larry show up in the next governor of New York. That'd be awesome. I appreciate that, guys. If you guys do want to support me, today is the last day for this quarter. I'll be bugging you all again in March, right? January, February. Yeah, in March again, because my next report will come out in April. So I made a heavy push in December for, for donations. I'll make another heavy push again in March, because March is when uh, April the report comes out. Why do I care about the report? When the report comes out, that is how the media will judge me. How much money did he raise last quarter? That's how they're judging. That's why you guys have seen me bug you a lot for money this month because of that. Then next quarter, I'll leave you guys alone a little bit in January, February. A little bit, but not crazy. 
but I will bug you again a lot in March because then that will be the next reporting period. So that's why that matters. It's why you saw me bug you a lot these last couple of weeks because it does matter. Today's the last day. If you guys want to put in, today will be the, will be the day to do it. If you want to put in for this quarter, LarrySharp.com slash learn. So thank you for that. I do appreciate that. So, all right, let me keep going with some more of these comments. I do appreciate that, obviously. So, all right. Um, let's see here. Gene says, I must take care of myself so I can help others. Yes. When I had postpartum depression and went to the hospital, my eldest son was nine, who was nine, came to me and asked if I was dying. I said, no, I just have to take care of myself so I can take care of you. I got to tell you, Gene, this is so important that you, that you say that. People don't realize that when you're taking care of yourself, you often suffer. When you take care of others, you often suffer yourself. You don't have to. You can do both. It is challenging. Of course it is. Of course it's challenging. But we want to do it. It makes sense for you and for them. Because here's the most important thing to remember. When it comes to people around you, not only are you either the help that they might need or the shoulder to cry on or the money if they're in financial trouble or the wisdom if you're a bit older and you can help them out with advice. You're also an example. All of us are. We're all examples to each other. If we have more examples of negativity and and, and self-sacrifice to where we kill ourselves in the long run, more people will act that way. We'll have more martyrs. I don't want more martyrs, right? I even tell you, give me money, but I would say, you know, bleed, but don't bleed out. I don't want you to martyr yourself. I want you to still have a good, happy life. I just want you to give me money so I can become the governor. But I want you to do both. And that means you have to think to yourself, how much do I want to give versus how much can I give versus how do I still pay my bills and keep my life happy? I want I want both of those things. So you're right. You try to take care of, of someone and then all of a sudden you wind up failing and then who takes care of them? You both lose. That's in life and business and love and everything and everything. But you don't just want to be the person who supports everyone else and then you go under. Because the sad part is if your example is you, you is that others will follow and you'll wind up in the long run hurting those you love in the long run. So yes, thank you. All righty. Um, Chad says, you're about the love, Larry, and we love you for it, brother. Thank you, my friend. I'm trying to. It does matter, right? Happiness does matter. Yes. Larry says, make sure you take vitamin C, D, and zinc. Keep the Rona away. There we go. Take your vitamins. Valerie's right. Take your vitamins. Absolutely. Yes. Gene says, my children are all grown up now. I'm having trouble finding a purpose. You know, it's funny you say that. My daughter, my oldest daughter, is going off to college next year. Tomorrow is the next year. Well, next year. And there's a part of me. I'm completely torn. If you're a parent, you probably know this. Or if you've had anyone young in your life move on, you probably know this feeling. Um, I feel like I'm torn, so proud and so happy she's going on her own. And don't leave me, my little girl. I have both of those feelings side by side, total pride and happiness, wanting my daughter to go off and do whatever her life is going to be. And don't leave me, little girl. I want you to still be three years old so I can pick you up and hold you in my arms. I want, I want both of those things and I can't have them, but I'm still human. So yeah. I, I think it can be hard. And Gene, if I would give you a bit of advice, I hope it will be helpful. Look for someone who you think has a purpose now. Follow that per person. Jump on that train. And what will happen is one of two things. You'll be on the train. That'll become your purpose. You'll like it. You'll be in. Great. Or you'll go, that's, that's not right. But again, you got moving. Right? Jumping on someone else's purpose on the train is good either way. It will either, you'll find a new purpose. You'll like it. That makes sense. I like that. Or you realize, eh, that's not, no, I don't, I don't really want that. But you got moving and you look for something else. The most important piece, the hardest part is starting. That's the hardest part, Gene. Start, find something, two ways. Someone who's already doing something or two, remember what I talked about earlier. What's the thing that you were always doing or trying to do when you were working or taking care of family? Was there a thing you focused on doing a lot of? You just kind of did it. Or is when you have other things, did you procrastinate? And when you procrastinated, what did you use as your procrastination? Do they overlap? This may give you some idea on where you should be going. I hope that was helpful. So um, let's see here. Ryan says, oh, sorry, we need, uh, 
Brian wrote to somebody else. I'm sorry. We need that kind of positive philosophy, not only in our government, but in all venues. Yes. Yes. Ryan, this is the, the point I want to bring up here, right? I'm glad you brought this up. I know, I know that wasn't wasn't for me, but I'm going to steal it because you're right. So I'm going to grab that. The, the point is, you don't want to govern differently than you want to live, right? You want to govern like you want to live. You want to live like you want to govern. Yes, you're correct. That's what you want, 100%. Yes. So, all right. Um, Lodge says, Larry may need a mod at some point. First time I'm seeing those spam comments. I know there have been a lot of spam comments recently. It's true. Absolutely. Yes. So, Ken says, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Yes, absolutely. Jonathan says, I wish I had hoped that politically and personally in my 2022 would be better. Jonathan, I'm not sure it will or won't, to be forward with you. I don't know. Here's what I do know. If you get better, you personally get better, things will be better. That's what I'll say. Things will be better. If politically and personally, 2022 goes in the toilet, but you're better, it's better than it going to the toilet and you not being better. I know that isn't a great consolation, but it's controlling what you can control, trying to influence, you know, politically what you possibly can, you know, deal with. But at least if you're if you're personally better off, just even just thinking the way you are, being happier, even if personally bad things happen to you, I hope they don't. But maybe there's an illness in your family or loss in your family or financial ruin in your family, whatever that may be, that's going to affect you personally either way, right? If you are in a better headspace, if you're in a better headspace, you will handle it better. You will react better. You will recover better if you're in a better headspace. So being in a better headspace is good no matter what happens. And if it gets great and politically and personally are great, you are in position to take advantage and exploit and get the best you possibly can out of it. Either way, this is a good idea. You in the right from a mind is going to be helpful no matter what. Yes. All right. Um, let's see here. John says, New Year's resolution, not buying anything from China due to the genocide against Uyghurs. Wow. Nothing. That's a tough one. Okay. I like it. And terrible civil rights records in general, boycott Chinese Communist Party. You know, it's not a bad one, actually. I don't. I already don't go to Walmart. Like, I will not shop at Walmart. Even if it's cheaper, I I will, if, if Walmart's the only place I can get something, then I don't get it. That that's I I already do on a personal level. I already boycott Walmart. Um, I, if I have to go, I'm lucky also in that where I live in New York City, I don't need Walmart. In certain areas, Walmart's the only place we can get it. So I know that I it's easier for me. So that isn't that much of a that sounds more righteous than it actually is. So I should be clear on that. Where I live in New York City, Walmart's not that big of a deal. We have Walmart in our area, but it's not that big of a deal. So I have many other options. In certain areas, boycotting Walmart would be a big deal because it's the only thing in the area. For me, I'm lucky. I don't have to, so I boycott um, a Walmart. Boycotting all China stuff, wow, that'd be tough. I don't, I don't know if I could actually do it. There's so much There's so much made and created in China. That will be challenging, John. Keep me up on that one, whether you could do that or not. I, I like the idea. I don't know if I could live my life because there's so much made in China as I think about it so much. So, yeah, I appreciate that. All right. Um, Judy says, just make a monthly donation like me, easier than worrying about Larry bugging you. It's true. She's right. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. So, um, Paula says, thanks for the great shows in 2021. Here's to a free, healthy, and prosperous new year. Oh, my God. Thank you. Yes. So good. I do appreciate that. I like that. All right. Um, let's see here. Barry says, Larry, you have to get a Republican ticket. I say this because I keep seeing people with binders, with blinders on, who are not willing to give you the chance on the libertarian ticket. They merely have blinders. I no, no, I yes. So if you're if you know people in the Republican Party, tell them that and maybe they'll say, Yes. Yes, I agree. I'm with you. Barry says, That's a tough love comment. Sorry, I don't want to see you lose this time. Neither do I. Do you think I want to see me lose? Of course not. Of course not. I'm Barry again, my I talked about being vulnerable. I'm telling you now, right? The the last time we ran was a great run for who we were and what we knew. If you look at what we knew, the team, the environment we were in, our naivete, we did great. 
for that. We did six times better than the last guy who ran Libertarian in New York State. We got the most anyone ever got in New York State. So relative to who we were, we did awesome. Compared to everything else, we did not. And I could admit that. That didn't go as well as I wanted it to go. I wanted it to be better. So I can look at both sides of it. Relatively, we did great. Compared to everything else, we didn't. I want to fix that. I'm going to recognize, as I you know, taught logic, I looked in the mirror. And I saw what wasn't working and what errors we made. I'm trying to fix them now, right? So one of the reasons why I'm bugging you guys is to fix it now, right? I didn't do that last time. And I have other issues I have, which is something I, I, don't, I have no control over, as Jonathan says. I have no control over how social media has completely screwed me over. The movement in, as a whole, me for my campaign, but the movement as a whole, totally screwed us over. Cancels us, shadow bans us. I used to be able to do one of these and get thousands upon thousands upon thousands of views. Now I get hundreds, only one, and I don't get thousands. Of, I have to stream this on eight different platforms to get a total of thousands of views, or I can't anymore. If I go back two years before COVID, I can stream it on just one and get thousands of views. If I did it on eight, I'd get over 10,000 views, 20,000 views. One point I got over 30,000 views. Social media now says no, you don't exist. If you don't, if you don't follow what we say is true, we 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 shadow ban you down to nothing. So now I'm emailing. You guys are getting my emails. Now I'm calling. You guys get my phone calls. Now I'm doing this too. You get this. You get all the things now. I'm doing events still. I have to work three times as hard now because I'm on social media anymore to get to get the same amount, amount of value. So I think you're right, Valerie. I need to have a Republican ticket if I can. The the forward ticket, every ticket I can possibly get. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. John, this has excellent point. I suffer from anxiety and depression and it hurts how I take care of myself and family. Absolutely. John, then yes. When you're feeling as a general rule, when you're feeling anxiety and depression, I think the two, I feel the two separate things. Some people kind of mix and match them. I tend to think they're different. Depression tends to feel like, as a general rule, there is no hope, right? It's, that's, I'm, I'm being very, I'm, I'm being reductive, I know, but I'm just getting down to no hope. I go back to those same three. I would ask yourself this question, Jonathan, when things feel bad, ask of these questions and try to answer them honestly, to the best of your ability. And if you can't get someone with you who will be honest with you, not who will just go, don't worry. You don't need the optimistic guy who's just gonna go, everything's gonna be fine because you don't believe that it makes things worse. Three questions. One, is it permanent? Is it pervasive? Is it personal? Whatever you're feeling. I can't get the job I want. I can't find the, the, the love that I want. I can't you know do the thing that I want to do, achieve myself. Great. Is it permanent? If it is, great. We accept that as permanent. How do we react? Is it pervasive? Probably not. It's almost never pervasive. But if it is, okay, great. How do we react? And then is it personal? Is it only you? Is it done just to you? Usually not. But if it is, how do we react? Then how do we react to all three and begin moving forward? That is the first step to getting out of the deep hole that depression puts you in. It doesn't solve depression. To be clear, that's not magic. It doesn't solve depression. But it does. People who are depressed aren't always in a dark hole. People think that depressed means I'm always sitting in a dark hole. No. I'm, and those who, are, who, have, who have had depression or who have it now, no, you're not always in a dark hole. But you go into dark holes, right? When you're in the dark hole, this exercise can at least get you out of the hole. Okay, I'm moving again. All right? And then, okay, I'm moving again. Now I've got a shot. Anxiety. Anxiety is about fear. Fear of the unknown. Fear. The best way of handling this, and getting yourself out of the anxiety, the anxiety is a prison. Depression's a hole. Anxiety is a prison, right? So depression, that helps you get out of that hole, right? The, the, the prison of anxiety is, is talking about what usually happens, what actually happens, and then when that thing happens, how do, re, how do you react to it? I'm serious. Often you have anxiety, say, about um, I'm making this up, a conversation you have to have with your ex-wife. I don't know if you have an ex-wife, but I'm making this up, right? And you, and you think about the worst case scenario. Oh, it's going to be yelling and screaming. They're going to call the cops. 
and you just go to that. And that's the fear and the anxiety and I'll have no power and no control. And that's what goes on in your head. It's a prison. Just shut you down. So you can't react. But instead, either yourself or with someone else, therapists work well, friends work too. Anyone who can do this well, have a conversation and say, okay, I know it could happen, right? It could go to cops. It could. What usually happens? And walk down that road with them. Well, usually I say this and she says that, then I get pissed off. Okay, okay. So we saw it. That's what usually happens. If you get pissed off, what can you do so you don't go to the next level? What do you think? When you have that conversation and that conversation, will get you out of the prison. Does it end your anxiety? None of, none of what I'm saying is magic. What I'm telling you will though, I promise this, Jonathan, if you go down that road, it'll get you out of that hole to start moving or out of the prison to start moving. It'll get you moving. You're still gonna have your anxiety issues. It's deeper than just some, one conversation. Still have depression, deeper than one conversation. But at least that can get you moving again. And you can't get better if you're not moving forward. So I hope that was helpful at least. So yes. All right. Missy says, it's difficult to feel like I have purpose. I struggle with that. I need you, Missy. I'll give you all the purpose you need. Oh my God. You know I need you. Absolutely. Yes. Judy says, uh, Jonathan, working in my garden helps my depression. Also in the winter, I use special life for seasonal uh, affective disorder. Yeah. There are things that get you out of it, right? It gets you moving, right, Judy? It doesn't mean you're not depressed. It doesn't mean your depression goes away. But the garden gets you moving. That's exactly what I want. Thank you for that, Judy. That's a great thing to share. I appreciate that. Yes, you just want to start moving. Yes. So, all right. Let's see if I can keep doing this. Um, yeah, growing a garden is great. Absolutely. Um, Paula says, thanks for offering real solutions and plans, not just complaints, criticism. Your critics of Crane Cuomo, however, are legendary. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Yes, absolutely. All right. Um, let's see. Joe, Joe says, would it, would make it easier if there was a guide to not buying from China manual or something. That would be cool. Yeah, I, 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 it'd be hard, right? How would you know? There's so much that's made. And then is it just the product that comes from China? Is it the raw materials that come from China? Is it everything? Very, very tough, right? Very tough to deal with that. And then, and then does that then by default, does that affect your local economy? If your economy is heavily built upon Chinese products, am I now hurting my economy by doing that or not? It's it's a good it's it's a great concept. I don't know how hard I don't know how hard it is to do. It may be possible, but man, tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Jonathan says, Larry, in my case, it's a lack of hope, and I'm with you on anxiety and depression being separate. Yeah. Yeah, dark holes are plenty and depression is self-feeding. If I'm depressed, getting sick is easier. Yes. And then staying that way, sick and sickness lingers. 100% true. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. 100%. Betsy says, happy, healthy new year, Larry, uh, and bring it on home as governor for us. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Yes. Benjamin says, Larry, very moving show today. Happy new year. I appreciate that. I really do. Absolutely. Guys, I, I want this to be more than just some guy ranting about how the other guy's bad. I say it all the time. So I, if I'm going to talk the talk, I got to walk the walk too. I've got to share myself with you. I've got to be human with you. We have to build this as a real community. Otherwise, what are we doing? I'm just another guy yelling other guy bad. I say I'm not that guy. Well, then I got to not be that guy, right? So I guess I spent this time focusing on things that people use. I usually don't focus on. But I do think it matters. If you think it matters, then please like, comment, and share. If you want to support the, the show, you know what I'm going to ask you. Go to libertarians, go to libertarianism.com. Click that. Take those tests. Share the link. It does matter. People care. Now is a great time to go learn about libertarianism. Tell your friends about it. All good. They support the show. This is a, a show sponsor. It's free. Liking, commenting, and sharing is free. Going to libertarianism.com is free. Taking those uh, uh, those tests and talking about it is free. And by the way, if you're feeling sad or bad, the first couple of classes are all about happiness. Not a bad way to get yourself in a good mood. Showing that libertarianism is the way. So share it with friends. Take it yourself. Get some cool swag. Support the show for free. Absolutely great. If you want to support my campaign, today's the last day for this quarter. LarrySharp.com slash donate. Whatever you can give does make it make it into my my report for this quarter. 
I won't be bugging you that much next month. I'll be bugging you again in March because, again, the next every quarter is the report. So I'll be bugging you heavy in the last month of every report. I'm going to bug you a lot. So let other people too because they're all getting it. But I'm going to bug you too. So don't get mad at me when it's March and I'm bugging you every day for cash. That's the reason why. That's why I bugged you so much this year, uh, this month. Excuse me. Same reason. All right, guys. Thank you so much for today. I appreciate it. Like, comment, share as always. We can get past our shadow ban. Anyway, guys, I will see you all next year.